Today I want to talk about a little bit about nutrition. Now, the entire topic of nutrition, like what do we eat daily and why, sounds enormous and I'm not sure if I'm even qualified. So we're not going to tackle that today. Um, but what I do want to tackle, since I have a great example with me and I'm dying to dig into the M&Ms, is uh, what I brought for a Nolan's 14 Fast Pack, unsupported Fast Pack. And um, I think it's a perfect example of um, what I'd use on, like, say, a six day or less trip. Now, if you don't know already, um, Nolan's 14 uh, takes place in the Colorado Sawatch range. And the goal is to um, summit 14 14ers in less than 60 hours. So, kind of a big, big goal. Um, 60 hours is only two and a half days, so it's not like you're there forever. Um, of course, me being me, um, I did have um, a special flavor to it. Um, I wanted to do the 15th 14er that's way, way the heck north of the regular, the rest of the line called Mountain the Holy Cross. Um, that was going to add another extra day and 32 miles. And just to make it even more ridiculous, once I was done with the, the, the Nolan's plus one mountain line, I wanted to grab my bike that was going to await me on the trailhead and ride the hundred or so miles back from Mountain Holy Cross trailhead back to the Blinks Cabin trailhead. So we're looking at around two and a half, three, three days for the Nolan's line, uh, another, another day to get to Holy Cross, and then yet another day to get back to Salida. So meal planning at that point or just what the menu for each day actually sort starts to come into play becomes very important so yeah that's that's what we're going to talk about how i planned that 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 out first thing you have to think about when you're planning like a multi-day fast pack um be an fkt or or whatever is how many calories do you think you're going to bring each day for me as a you know a 30 mumble um aged man I weigh between 175, 180 pounds, depending on the season. I just my my base requirements per day is actually pretty high, right? And when you um, when you're going for most every single minute of the day, it, it it just adds on to that, right? So I'm not bringing 2,000 calories. I'm bringing more like 4,000 calories. 4,000 calories only breaks down to about 166 calories an hour, which doesn't sound all that much. Just as a, a rule of thumb, your body can't absorb more than say 300 calories an hour. So there's no need to bring like 7,000 calories. But bring um, a good fair amount, especially if you're going for like upwards of a week, just to be on the safe side because something could happen out there and you don't want to go starving. I usually bring a little bit more than I need just, just because maybe the food I'm bringing isn't agreeing with my stomach. Say I bring nuts and the nuts are just not working for me. I can stop eating the nuts and just eat everything else, if that makes sense. If I'm going for like uh, an FKT that's less than a day, I probably don't have to bring that many calories since I can end the trip on a deficit, say, and then just have this huge meal afterwards of pizza and ice cream. That's totally cool with me. So the amount of calories that I bring on a trip um, for the day, um, I've come to based on trial and error. It's what works for me, right? Um, based on past trips and how many calories I brought for them. And I'm pretty comfortable with what I bring. Um, I do bring a pretty big fudge factor, like I said, um, just in case something goes wrong or my stomach isn't agreeing with me. If you're, say, um, a four foot 11 woman, you're gonna have different calorie requirements than I am as a five foot 11 man. Um, so it's always individual. So don't base your actual calorie numbers on my stuff. I'm, I'm a big guy that's really super muscular. I'm not, a, I'm not actually a thin, wafy ultra runner. You know, I'm never gonna win Western States. Okay, so calories, bring enough. <laughs> not too many, but enough. The next topic is flavor. Um, make sure to bring a wide variety of different types of flavors with you. When I, call, when I talk about flavors, I mean something like sweet, salty, um, sour, um, bitter, and savory, right? Um, the idea is you never know what your body is going to do out there, right? It might be that, you know, your body really just craves salty food. So have something that's salty with you. Or it might be that your, your mouth feel um, or your tongue it just cannot take anything sweet anymore. So don't eat something sweet, switch to something savory or bitter or something like that, but have something to switch out. 
Another thing to think about is um, just basic macros. So we're talking about carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Make sure to bring all three, especially on multi-day things. If I was going to do something that would take less than a day, you really don't have to worry about macros all that much, right? Just bring simple carbs with you, and once you're done, you know, um, just have an actual real meal. But things get a little bit more complicated when you're doing multi-day stuff, right? And it kind of depends on the intensity, but let's talk about carbs first. Say I'm still doing something really high intensity, like a 48 hour just push, you know? I would have mostly simple carbs, for sure, and just a little bit of stuff to add variety, a little bit of fat, a little bit of protein. For this trip that I outlined, the, the Nolans plus Holy Cross plus bike ride back, I wanted to make sure all three um, macros were being uh, represented because um, you know you, you never know like something might just strange happen and because of what you eat like I'm not saying you're gonna have a protein deficiency after three three days but like you know it's it's more like your body's gonna expect these things anyway so give your body what it wants when it comes to carbohydrates for like a three or four day trip you can have simple carbs but you can also you know indulge and actually have some car complex carbohydrates if your stomach can take it mine definitely can when I'm doing a three or four day trip I'm going at a pace that allows my stomach to easily um, digest a wide variety of foods I'm not stopping at any point to just like make a meal this isn't a backpacking trip but I'm at a pace that's slow enough where like indigestion isn't really a problem for me so and then you know my my menu can reflect that basically so we covered calories we covered a variety of flavors and then make sure your macros are represented. I'm not going to get into specific percentages of your macros because um, honestly I think the jury's out there. Um, as a very rough baseline, have a large amount of carbs just because they're easy to digest. Um, have a fair amount of fat and then have you know a fair amount of protein. Yeah, and go from there. See what works for you. Um, make sure whatever food you bring, this is a big rule. Um, experiment it experiment with it before you go right so don't just bring whatever because Justin told you to and then you're on the trail and it's not agreeing with you you have digestion or it's just it just tastes terrible anything like that do not blame me so how do you um, how do you experiment say you're going on a three-hour run right bring some food to eat every hour right and see how you feel does it taste good does it agree with your body does it want you does it make you want to eat more right because if you eat a food that like stops you from being hungry then there's a problem because you won't continually eat and after two or three days you know the name of the game is just get the calories in right it's actually like it's a it's a struggle in of itself if that makes sense um almost the the idea of constantly eating sounds great in theory but in practice it just it's terrible um, it gets boring, it gets repetitive, um, it gets tiring. So um, think about like, is this food easy to eat? Do I want to continue to eat? Will I be able to do this four days straight kind of thing? So that's the theory. Um, let's see how it, it's worked in practice. So I have right here is a Ziploc bag and this is a day's ration of food that I brought on my uh, Nolan's Plus um, attempt. And what I do is I put everything everything I need in a large, I think a gallon size Ziploc bag. And depending on how many days I'm out, I'll bring one of these, right? And what I can do, say it's a beginning of a new day, is take my fast pack and it'll be kind of in the bottom here. And I'll take it out and then I'll stow it in the front. And I'll know that uh, that's what the, what's the food I have for the day, right? And then in the morning I might take a little bit of food out and put it in different pockets or like in a in a waist belt and just so I have easy access to food of different varieties no matter how I'm moving or where I'm moving. Um, just so um, the amount of time I've stopped to take off my pack and rummage through my pack to find food is kept at a minimum. Inside is all the food and we're gonna go through it, through it all and uh, talk about it. We're gonna talk about um, calories, flavors, and variety basically. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna take out here is this. And this is orange flavored Tailwind. This is 1500 calories. This is like half a tub of Tailwind. Um, and this is great. Um, one, this is super convenient. And two, this is a lot of calories on my daily amount that I'm bringing. 
Using this, you just mix it with water. It dissolves almost instantaneously. And then you can just sip on the water as you go. So you're always bringing, you're always taking in just a little bit of calories each time. And you can add as much as or as little amount of tailwind into water. And it, it, it has a pretty high saturation point. So you can make it like a goo if you want, but I really enjoy this as just knowing that I'm always, every hour, there's just a few hundred calories going through me. So this is nice. As far as flavors go, so calorie is pretty dense for what it is, 1500. As far as flavor, you've got your sweetness because it's mostly sugar, right? And then you have a little bit of saltiness because it's got electrolytes in it too. So when it comes to variety, the, this, this hits my sweet tooth, right? Because it's just nothing but sugar. I started using this to stop bringing just candy. Maybe candy's not the best thing to bring in the world. Um, it's nice to have a little variety, but um, maybe I was kind of overdoing it with candy. Okay, so Tailwind, 1,500 calories. The next thing I'm gonna bring out is this, and this is just mixed nuts and uh, candy ginger. I have walnuts, uh, dry, roasted, and salted pe uh, pecans, and roasted almonds, and then the, the candy ginger. I've written on this 1,100 calories, so this again is a fair amount of calories for the day, almost as much as the Tailwind. We're looking at um, savory flavors, a little bit of salty flavors from the salted cashews, and maybe even a little bitter from uh, the, the, the candied ginger. A little bit of sweetness too. So this kind of comprises a lot of the different flavors. And like, if if, depending on how I feel, I can eat it just in a big um, handful, or I can pick out the things I want, which is, you know, what you're probably not supposed to do, but you end up anyways because you have like a favorite. You're like, I really want walnuts right now. It's just a nice variety. And so if, when it comes to variety of like, Mouthfeel, very different from, say, the tailwind. You know, I actually have to chew this. And the other thing is I actually have to chew this, right? So I'll uh, save this for like a very easy trail section. So say I'm going from south to north and I've just gone off Princeton and I have miles and miles of Colorado Trail to do. This is the time I jam these out and start chomping away um, because I'm just I'm just putting in the miles to get out, get get to Yale again. As far as macros go, a lot of fat, fair amount of protein, and not that, you know, the, the ginger actually adds a little bit of um, sugar as well as fiber. Um, I didn't talk about fiber, but I usually don't bring a lot of it on these trips just because it's bulky. Um, again, maybe a great idea is before you go on a trip like this, eat as best as you can beforehand. So for me personally, that means a lot of green leafy salads, a lot of vegetables in general, get my fiber then. And then when I'm on my trip, take the compromise and have food that doesn't have a whole lot of fiber. But um, this gives me just a little bit of fiber fix so I don't feel crazy. The next thing we'll talk about is, oh yes, candy. So this is 1200 calories of peanut M&Ms. So this is an indulgent for sure. But again, it's a very small amount of food that packs a lot of calories. And these are super fun to eat, right? You can like eat them one by one if you really want to. Just something fun to um, break up the monotony of eating walnuts all the time. And it's even eat fun to chew. When it comes to macros, mostly sugar, a monochrome amount of protein and fat from the, the peanuts, but it's mostly sugar, right? But um, I, I can't think of a trip that, that is ruined because of too much chocolate. So there you go. Next thing I brought was just um, a couple of protein bars, or protein bars. So this one's a Cliff Bar Builders. Um, and I say quote unquote protein bars because they're actually pretty well balanced when it comes to macros, right? This does have 20 grams of protein in it, but it also has 11 grams of fat and it has 29 grams of carbs. So kind of a sugary little thing. So when it comes to flavors, sweet, maybe savory, maybe. Um, it has a little bit of sodium, but um, yeah. It's just, uh, it's nice to like break off a piece and chew it for a little while and you can keep the rest kind of in your pack while you go and then jam on the, the tailwind. And I brought three of them, um, two different flavors, right? And these are 290 calories each. So fairly caloric dense for what it is. This is a thousand calories almost. Not too bad, not too bad. And that is it. That is absolutely it. There was only four different, four different things in the entire days. And I had four of these because I was going to be out for about four days at the at the longest to get to the 
the Holy Cross Trailhead. And there, I would have my bike and I'd have yet another one of these to make it to um, Salida. And that's it. Um, it's very simple. Um, I don't mind eating the same thing every single day. Maybe after the fourth day, I wouldn't mind something completely different. But um, um, thinking as fuel as fuel, this works pretty well. In total, this bag has 47 and 85 calories in it. That's a ton of calories. But remember, um, the plan was for a five foot 11, 185 pound guy to take 23 and a half hours for four days straight across 120 miles of terrain in the, the, the Sawatch Mountains of Colorado, right? So this is what we're looking at. <laughs> but um, it really isn't a whole lot of food, right? It's, it's very convenient, um, very compact, but it still has a variety of macros, variety of flavors, and I know that this food works for me because I've experimented with it throughout the years in various trips. That's kind of like an overview of what I brought for my Nolan's attempt. I didn't make it, unfortunately. I got some sort of like asthma-like symptoms on Yale. I had an idea that maybe it was some of the food I brought, to be honest. So I went ahead and got a um, allergy test. I was thinking, I'm like, am I allergic to cashews? But the allergy test um, came out um, negative when it came to food allergies, so I'm not allergic to any sort of nuts. I'm definitely not allergic to sugar. There's a big problem. There's nothing else that has like an allergen. But it's again, something you have to experiment. Like, is it the food that's holding you back because of a food allergy? Um, in my case, no. It continues to be a mystery to me. I might just have asthma, I might have a, a vocal cord dysfunction, um, things like that. We'll find out, we'll find out. So I was going to do this video and I was looking really forward to doing it because I really um, was wanting to jam on these M&Ms that have been sitting near my desk for days and days and days. But I'm actually planning to do a bikepacking trip in a couple days. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this for the bikepacking trip. And I've already kind of like gotten a day of, it's just gonna be an overnighter. So I have one of two days worth of food already packed. So this is fantastic. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, very brief introduction and the type of um, meal planning and food I bring for like an FKT fast pack. Now again, like if I was going on a backpacking trip, I, I don't know if this is what I'd bring. This seems a little more uh, food as fuel than needed for something that's a little bit more casual, where I am going to sleep, where I am going to take some time to uh, sit down and enjoy the view, um, and not something like, um, uh, you know, an FKT. So hopefully that gives you some ideas when it comes to your own food planning on whatever high, you know, high output trip you have. Yeah, um, if you have any more questions for me when it deals with things like um, um, fast packing, bike packing, um, things like that, something you think I'd, uh, oh, there's a bunny right there. What are you doing, bunny? What do you, what do you wanna do, bunny? Am I in your spot? I really apologize, I'll be done in a minute. <laughs> um, um, things that you think I'd have a uh, good knowledge of, uh, just add them to the comments or email me or something and I'll try to get to them. If I think that um, they're a good question for me. Oh my god, the bunny is like right there. What's up, bunny? <laughs> oh my god. Okay.